We have ignition. All engines are running. We have liftoff. We have liftoff at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The tower has... Why? Tower, a building shaking here. A building shaking. shaking that we're holding it with our hands. Look at that rocket go into the clouds at 3,000 feet. The roar is terrific. Look at it going. You can see it. You can see it. Of our roof has come in here. Direct from our newsroom in New York. In color, this is the CBS Evening News with Harry Reisner substituting for Walter Cronkite on assignment at Cape Kennedy and John Lawrence in the Khe Son Valley, South Vietnam, Don Webster near An Hoa, South Vietnam, Marvin Calvin, Washington, Bill Stout in Bell Gardens, California, and Richard O'Brien in Lakehurst, New Jersey. Good evening. A moment ago, we watched as Walter Cronkite described the first launching of a Saturn V moon rocket. That launch was perfect, and so was everything else, right through this afternoon's splash down in the Pacific by the unmanned Apollo capsule after penetrating 11,000 miles into space. Here's Walter Cronkite again with the full story. An indescribable day here at America's spaceport. At once, one of the most exciting, and perhaps one of the least exciting, of our entire space program. The most exciting because, as you saw, it marked the first flight of that monstrous 36-story tall, 3,000-ton Saturn V rocket that will carry Americans to the moon. The least exciting because, to the lasting astonishment of just about everyone who lived through it, this unbelievable space machine, in its initial flight test, performed every single task from liftoff to splashdown with less trouble and considerably more punctuality than the average commuter train. As Werner von Braun predicted yesterday, with Saturn V, we have left the hit or miss Wright Brothers era of space flight and arrived at a time when new 1967 spaceships perform as predictably perhaps even as safely as new 1967 airliners. This is how ignition and liftoff look to an automatic camera right on the pad, focused on the nozzle of one of those tremendous F-1 engines. The camera was knocked off the air. In fact, NASA tells us they haven't even found it yet. Now we're two minutes into the flight of Saturn V, those 160 million horsepower first stage engines gulping 3,000 gallons of fuel a second have just about run dry. In a moment, they'll cut off and you'll see eight retro rockets drag the first stage back and away, safely clear of the upper rocket now hitting some 6,000 miles an hour. Those upper stages now are coasting without power and they are weightless. Now eight small ullage rockets give it a slight shove to settle its tons of liquid hydrogen fuel in the tanks so that stage two can fire its five engines with a million pounds of thrust. With Saturn safely underway, the escape tower is fired off, pulling with it the protective cover over Apollo. Now here in future flights is where the Apollo astronauts would first see the sky. Back on pad 39A, the flames of Saturn's departure still burn. That blast ground away the top three quarters of an inch of the hardened concrete flame pit. 
Only a deluge of a million gallons of water prevented Saturn from simply melting the 44-story service tower as it passed. Eight and a half hours later, the Apollo capsule was fired into Earth's atmosphere at lunar return speeds as Apollo Saturn passed its final test, proving that ca it can indeed get man safely back from the moon. Splashed down northwest of Hawaii, six miles from the carrier Bennington. Less than 10 months ago, tragedy here at Cape Kennedy rocked this nation's space program, set back our moon landing schedule by as much as a year, and set loose doubts about sending men into space at all. Today, the nation rejoices and hopes rise again that John Kennedy's goal of putting an American on the moon by 1970 will be realized. American motions know high peaks and deep valleys. The tragedy that took the lives of three astronauts last January should not have deterred the nation from pushing forward in the assault on space. And yet perhaps the psychology of that setback helped account for the deep slash that Congress made this year in future space projects. Those at the Space Center, whose eyes are on the stars, hope that the successful flight of Saturn V will rekindle the public's enthusiasm and that Congress will respond. American industry and inventiveness have gotten off the floor after some tough blows to build a rocket that can keep the United States ahead in space exploration. But this requires a national effort, which the space people see as one worthy of the American people, marshalling as it must their highest scientific skills, a great industrial capability, and, until now, unquestioned courage. They believe that far from being a financial drain at a time when other earthly problems seem more demanding. The vast amounts needed for space exploration are a bargain antidote for a nation's badly drained morale. This is Walter Cronkite, CBS News, Kennedy Space Center. President Johnson said late today the successful Saturn V flight is proof that the United States can launch and bring back safely to Earth the spaceship that will take men to the moon. The Surveyor 6 spacecraft will land on the moon's surface tonight, hunting more information about possible astronaut landing sites. But the target area chosen for Surveyor, called Sinus Medii, is so rugged that it's given only about a 50% chance to make a successful upright landing. 